You seen Julie Chandler? I'm supposed to uh, give her this. Well, I can give it to her. I'll see her at the play reading. Who are you? Cecily Davidson. Who are you? Should have known. Known what? I'll say one thing for Charlie. He's got great taste in women. Is there a problem? Could she lose the baby? Will Erica make it? We don't know any more than you do. Oh, Is she yes. still in delivery? What's happening? Is the baby okay? Tough on us all. If you could just keep us in your thoughts and, and your prayers, we'd appreciate it. We'll let you know as soon as we know any. Is she still in labor? As far as I know. I'm sorry, Mona. I needed an emergency. Well, I can't take much more of this. I've got to find out what's happening with Erica. Beautiful, healthy baby girl. Oh, thank God. Thank God the baby's all right. Congratulations, Erica. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I can't believe it. It was supposed to be a boy and it's a girl. Oh, I'm so happy. I have a daughter. We have a daughter. As long as she's all right, is she all right? You promised me she is all right, isn't she all right? Charlie's. I'm a friend of Julie's, a real good friend. Well, why haven't I seen you around here before? I got out of school a long time ago. So how do you know Julie? Oh, we met. In New York? Yeah. And she mentioned me? And pass. Oh, so you're a real mystery man, huh? Tell me something. Does Charlie got any hidden talents? <laughs> you must be Nico. Smart girl. Mm. So, maybe Julie's life in New York wasn't so awful after all. No, it was, it was pretty bad, but uh, she's home now. She had to get a break. And you're going to see to it that she does? I'll be around. Six months, from what I hear? Tough break, doing time in the Cortland Museum. Where you can keep a close eye on Julie. Anybody messes with her, I'll climb all over. Sounds fascinating. Depends. So, Nico, you have a real case on Julie, right? Yeah, you make sure she gets this, okay? I don't know. I'm gonna be without Emily Ann and Donna. I'm be stuck up there all by myself. I've never been to Boston. I don't even know if I'm gonna like Boston. Oh, Boston is a lovely town. Great culture, fine social life. Social life? What kind of a social life? My social life is here in Pine Valley with my family. I mean, it's a great opportunity, you know, running a big restaurant for a corporation like that, but geez, I don't know. Oh, I'm just flapping my gums here. You're not paying any attention to me, are you? Oh, Benjamin, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm, I'm not fit company for anybody these days. I, Langley leaving me and now Cecily walking out, I'm the loneliest woman in the world. Oh, no. Oh, this is the lowest blow of all. Well, what's the matter? Oh, vodka, quickly, please, vodka, my nerves, I can't... Vodka is not gonna help you, okay? Oh, that's what you think. How much can one woman bear? That, that's it. Now, what's in the letter? Oh, read it for yourself. Bitsy's coming. Bitsy, that's a cute name. Who's Bitsy? Bitsy is Cecily's mother, and she's coming here to visit her daughter, and she's expecting to visit with Langley and me. So what's the problem? She entrusted me with her little girl, and I have betrayed that trust by driving the child away from me, just as I've done with my own husband. Now, what is the woman to think? Nothing. I mean, Cecily's doing fine with Hillary and Mitch, and the state of your marriage is none of Bitsy's business. Well, she will make it her business. And as far as Hillary and, and, and Mitch are concerned, they're, they're living together without benefit of clergy. Now, what kind of an environment is that? for an innocent young girl. Mm. Oh. 
Oh, I tell you, Benjamin, you've got to understand I cherish my position here in Pine Valley. It's the only thing I have left. I would absolutely expire if Betsy were to learn what a failure I've become. Oh, now, come on. You're not a failure. That's nonsense. Oh, I've got to think of something. I can't leave this to chance. No, there's got to be a way to handle this. Some means to cover my tracks. Duchess, please, L let's just stop this right here, because you and I both know that cooking up schemes is how you get into trouble in the first place. Please tell me, please tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. I can take it. I really can. Erica, your baby is fine. She is perfect. And she's a real beauty. Ruth is right over there, getting the baby ready. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's a girl. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> well, it happens sometimes, Erica. <laughs> Sometimes you know Shadow is mistaken for a baby's additional equipment. <laughs> and we reached the wrong conclusion, right, Joe? Are you disappointed? Disappointed? A girl is what I wanted all along, don't you remember? <laughs> you told me that you were pregnant, I said. Maybe. Maybe you'll be a little girl. And she can grow up to be beautiful in the image of her mother. the play and I I really got into it and I don't know if I'd be half bad as Kate. <laughs> okay everyone, here's what you've been waiting for. Ooh, okay. okay. Look on with her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Miss Mason? Yes, yes. Um, this right here, yeah. this is a mistake, isn't it? No, that's right. No, it can't be. It is. Miss Mason, Julie gave a great reading. I mean, Cecily is Kate? Come on, it just doesn't make sense. Charlie, it makes perfect sense. Listen, Julie, Julie is much more suited for Bianca. Soft and gentle and pliable. Now, Cecily has, um, fight. And an untamed quality and the physical chemistry between you two. Will you just trust me, please? Your scenes with Cecily will spark with fury and passion. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a moment with your scripts. Yeah. Then we can start the reading. Cool. What was that all about? What do you think? Julie, you would be a much better Kate. Cecily, I mean, come on. Stop it. It's okay. Bianca's a good part. I don't have as much to learn. And besides, don't you think that Cecily's had enough practice conniving in front of an audience? Yeah, I guess it's true what they say about typecasting, mm -hmm. huh? See, Carly's no fool. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's so funny. Oh, who cares? This is the most fantastic opportunity I may want to rehearse forever. <laughs> again. Don't worry. He won't hurt you. It's just hearing his voice. 
He's not going to hurt you again. He's in jail, and he's not getting out. Hey, Nico. Hey, Willie. Anyone see you? Ah, piece of cake. Just like you said, I climbed over the back wall, and here I am. Hey, this is some nice digs. Not bad for a guy on probation, huh? Where's the cash? Uh, come on, I keep on doing business with you. I'll have an early retirement. <laughs> I never knew a guy with your luck. It's what you call experience yes. and smarts. Yeah, look, how much you gonna put down in next week's game? Nothing, nothing. I, I got someplace else for the stuff. I pay you off, and now you go to somebody else? Come on, Willie, how long have we been doing business? Hey, come on, where are you putting that bundle? On something real important. But, hey, I'll keep in touch. <laughs> you better be. Hey, hey, I had word from Creed. What's he want? Oh, he's out of the bone factory and feeling a lot better. Wanted to thank you. Family's real important to that guy, you know. Yeah, thanks, uh, for the message. See ya. Miracles. Isn't she just a real live miracle? Mm -hmm. She looks so much like you did when you were a baby, honey. Oh, no. I could never be this beautiful. Oh, that's... That's not true. But she, she's just as beautiful as her mom. Look at her little hand. <laughs> Look at her fingers. Look how they taper. So pretty. <laughs> so artistic. I bet she's artistic. Look how she uses them. She's mm -hmm. so graceful. She's just like a little ballerina. She's oh, I love you so much. She's a dream. She's just, just a dream. <laughs> Mark was very happy, wasn't he, to be an uncle? Oh, honey, we were all so happy when it was all over and both of you were fine. Yeah, he and uh, uh, Jeremy and Silver will be back later. Oh, good. Do you know she smiled at me before? She really smiled at me before? You know, sweetheart, that probably was a little gas. <laughs> no, Mother, she smiled at me. She really did. Oh, she's just an angel. Oh, I love you so much. I waited for you for a very long time. And no one has ever, ever been more welcome in this whole wide world than you. How are we doing? <laughs> oh, fine. You know, she smiled at me before. She really smiled oh, at me. Of course she did. She's happy to be here. Oh, but I'm afraid I have to part the two of you for a while. Oh, no. Why? She has to go to the nursery for a checkup. No, she doesn't. She doesn't need a checkup. She's perfect. She's absolutely perfect, unless there's something you're not telling me. No, no, no. It's just normal procedure. All our newborns have to have a, a routine exam. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I don't want to give her up. I don't know. <laughs> it won't be for long. I'll bring her right back. Okay, please do right back. <laughs> She's about the prettiest baby I've ever seen. No mistake of that. Oh, aren't you about to sleep? <laughs> I hope they're telling me the truth. Oh, sweetheart, of course they are. My goodness, you're really the typical new mother. You know, I just thought, what on earth am I going to do with that closet full of blue clothes that I bought? Oh, Mother, I told you not to buy a lot of things in advance. Really, you just have yourself to blame. Anyhow, Mother, exchange them. She can wear blue. She can wear blue. She can wear any color in the spectrum. Everybody could. It's gonna know she's a girl because she's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, I think it's very unfair. I think they should just examine the baby in the mother's room. Uh, I miss her too. Erica, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of me too. I'm so happy. I don't know. I feel like I could laugh and cry all at the same time. <laughs> You did this, you know. 
You gave this to me. You gave me the greatest happiness I could ever be. A little girl. Hi, bright eyes. You got... Hi, Mr. Dalton. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Good to see you. Hi. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. How's it going? Okay. So, are you looking for someone? Yeah, uh, Carly. I'm a little late. I'm supposed to help you guys with the show. And I just became an uncle. Are you kidding? No. Erica had her baby? She did. The cutest little girl you ever saw in your life. Well, congratulations. Is Erica okay? She's a little tired. <laughs> But I don't think I've ever seen her happier. So, uh, how's it feel to have a new cousin? What? Well, Erica's my sister. That makes her your aunt. I didn't realize. I, I mean... Yes, yes. Congratulations to you, too. Okay, here we go. Oh, thank you. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Carly. Hey, Everyone, please be seated. Oh, I want to introduce you. All right, now, for all those who may not know who this gentleman is already, this is Mark Dalton, a talented pianist and composer. His original musical was produced off-Broadway. Many of his songs have been recorded, and you can hear his commercial jingles on television. I mean, the list goes on. <laughs> and we are honored to have him working with us. He's going to compose music for our production. Hey. Okay. Let's get started now with the reading, Act One, Lucencio and Tranio. Okay. What, may I ask, is so important that I have been summoned post-haste? Well, Professor, I appreciate your getting here post-haste. It's about the Duchess. She needs you. Is she ill? Well, you could say that. She's on the verge of a nervous breakdown because Cecily's mother is coming and you and Cecily are not around. That is not what I consider important. Wait, wait, please. Just hear me out, okay? Now, she's made a lot of mistakes, but she loves you. Now, can't you forgive her and come back? For her convenience. To save face for Bitsy. No, thank you. Now, wait a minute. Who am I talking to here, Mr. Clean? I mean, how come you're so hard on the Duchess? You've made a few mistakes in your day, haven't you? And this hunger strike, I know it was kind of silly, but she's just trying to get you back. She forced me away with her constant meddling and trying to manage my daughter's life. Plus that little stunt of getting Marion Colby to try to lure me up to Willow Lake. Yeah, well, I told her that wouldn't work. Well, then why are you suggesting that I give her a second chance? Oh, come on. That's what life's about, isn't it? Me understanding why people make mistakes and giving them a second chance? Who's perfect? Are you perfect? I mean, people deal with things in different ways. They, they try to change life if they don't understand that they do anything to make it bearable. You know, and in an attempt to escape, sometimes you make things worse. Doesn't mean that someone's heart isn't in the right place. Nice try, Benjamin. But right now, all I require is a little stability in my life. No more stress and strain, no more temper tantrums, no more total dictatorship. There was a lot of love in that relationship. I can't believe that's dead. Dead or alive, I would appreciate it very much if you would confine yourself to meddling in other people's lives. Just butt out of mine. Oh, fine. Hey, I'm sorry. You've got a great life. You've got a great job. Lots of friends. I wish you more of the same. Well, I, I do have a job. Uh, teaching assistants pay isn't uh, uh, what it could be, but at least I'm my own man. Yeah, well, a guy like you with your gift of gab, you could go do a lot better. You ever been a bartender? One doesn't live with Phoebe without learning how to mix spirits. Terrific. I got a job opening. Right here. Right now. Come on.
I'm going to see Cecily and try to persuade her to come back home before her mother arrives. Well, I might have better luck at that, Mrs. Wall. <laughs> it's very sweet of you, dear, but I, I'm the one who drove her away, so I'm the one who has to do the penance, and I hope I'll be able to bring her back with me. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> you hold that thought. Phoebe, darling, oh. don't you look lovely? Oh, and Mrs. Valentine, oh, how good it is to see both of you. Oh, well, good to see you too, dear, except we weren't expecting you until tomorrow. Oh, yes, I know I did jump the gun a little bit, but I had a change of plans, and I was so longing to see my darling Cecily, and, and, and all of you, of course. So I just hopped on a plane and came right along. I hope I'm not inconveniencing you. Oh, no, 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 we were... All prepared for you. Yes, come in. Hi. Excuse me. So, how's the new mother? <laughs> Glowing with pride and happiness. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. You did good. Have you seen her, Nick? Have you seen her? Not yet. Oh, she's absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. She's the most perfect baby who ever was. Well, no, not the most perfect. There was another one before. Oh. <laughs> you're very sweet. You're very sweet to come. I really needed to speak to you alone, Nick. That's why I called you just the minute that, that Travis and I... That's why I called you just the minute that, that Travis and my mother left. There's something really disturbing me. What? A nightmare. I mean, the worst nightmare that you can ever imagine. Just before I went into labor. What happened? Well, you were in it. In fact, you, you were kind of my guide. And I don't know. It was all very, very confusing and, and very frightening. And I haven't been able to figure it out yet, so I thought maybe you would be able to help me. Well, you think you might be overreacting? After all, it was, it was just a dream. No, I feel like it was more of a, a sign or, or a warning. I don't know what it was. But whatever it was, I can tell you it's... It's going to affect me for the rest of my life. Something good is coming up when you get the best. It was like a movie of my life. My prom, my high school prom. Can you imagine? You know, the night Jeff proposed to me. Mm -hmm. And then that, that really horrible night later on when he, when he found out that I had had that abortion. And Mary Kennicott was in it. And I kept looking for my baby. And then Philip, he was just as he was then, telling me that I'd never really loved him, that I married him only because I was pregnant. And then Tom, accusing me of not wanting a baby. And then Brandon, Brandon going to Hong Kong without me. And then you and Adam and Mike, all not believing in my love and leaving me. And then my father. I tried to change the dialogue to what it really was, but my father wouldn't let me. Oh, he was the director. And he said that I had to play it as it was originally written. And he left me. And I had to accept it. I had to. But I said, no, this is just a dream. And he said, no. No, it isn't a dream. It's a memory. It really happened. And then he disappeared. And I screamed at him not to go. I begged him not to go. And then I heard a baby cry. 
and I knew it was my baby. I knew that. And I was looking and looking, and I, I was trying to find the baby, and I was looking everywhere, but I just didn't know where to look. And, and then I woke up. Mark was there while I was in labor. What does this mean, Nick? I just feel like I was given some sort of a message. And I have to find the code to figure it out. But I haven't done that yet. Well, why should it matter? I mean, you've got a wonderful baby. You've got a man who adores you. What more do you want? I wish I knew. Tis a good hearing when children are toward. But a harsh hearing when women are froward. Come, Kate, let's to bed. <laughs> All right, okay, I think we'll stop right there, thank you. At our next rehearsal, I want that same enthusiasm in the readings. And please, everybody, remember the language is supposed to sound natural. So if you don't understand something, ask me, okay? All right, <clears throat> goodbye. Thanks. Thanks, Carly. Thank you. Okay, good job. Julie, I like what you're doing with the reading there. Bianca's nice and warm and friendly. That was terrific. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. I guess I'll see you at the next rehearsal. I want to get over to the Chateau and tell Ellen the good news about Erica. Well, say hi for me, okay? I will. Good to see you. See you soon, John. Bye. Bye. Look, Julie, I hope you don't feel bad about me doing this with Cecily. Why would I? It's just a play. Good. Look, I'm going to grab Carol, because I've got to go home and look at some lecture notes. All right. Okay? I'll see you. Mm -hmm. But I'll see you later. Good. Bye. Carol. Very good, Shirley. Oh, thank you. Good. And nice work, Cecily. Thank you, Carly. You know what? What? I think I might stop by Julie's and offer to run lines with her. Should I take notes for my psych paper? This has nothing to do with your obsession theory. I just want to be sensible about the whole thing. After all, she and I are playing sisters. Mm-hmm. Come on, let's go. Bye, Charlie. Hey, right, see ya. It's a bit early, isn't it? A bit, but I've been feeling a bit under the weather. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, nothing to be concerned about. Well, here's to your most welcome presence. Oh, and to your generous hospitality. Oh. <clears throat> now, tell me all about Cecily. Has she been behaving herself? Oh, Cecily is an absolute joy to have around. She is such a, a well-bred, gracious young lady, um, growing up awfully fast. Uh, you can be very proud of her. Oh, yes, I am. I'm so glad there's something doing well in my life. Bitsy? Was that something wrong, dear? Well, I should think you would be on top of the world. I mean, blissfully happy with your handsome young husband. Phoebe. No, it's absolutely, it's, it's all right. It's nothing really. Now, uh, speaking about wonderful, fabulous husbands, how is Langley? I've been telling all my friends what a wonderful match you two are, despite your disparate backgrounds. I mean, a marriage just steeped in love. Dear Phoebe, you are so fortunate. Yes, 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 I am. You're right. Uh, Langley and I do have some sort of special... Phoebe, what is it? Have I said something? I... Oh, I'm sorry. There really isn't any point in my... I, I, I may as well tell you the truth. I'm no good at something. You know, I'm home. Lee! Miss Lee! Hey, it's all right. I knew it was coming. I won't go if you don't want me to. Of course I don't want you to go. I don't want you out of my sight for more than five minutes at a time. But you gotta go. I'm not gonna have it any other way. It is a great opportunity. You know, Boston's not that far away. Well, sure. Hop, skip, and a jump. 
Oh, hey, and, and you'll be running your own restaurant? Yeah, I mean, franchise and everything. If things go really well, maybe I can buy the place outright. Which would mean moving to Boston, huh? Let's just take it one step at a time, okay? I mean, I'm going to be commuting back. It's just a trial thing. I don't want to even think about a relocation right now, okay? Well, yeah, but, I mean, if it does work out... Uh... Please, let's just wait and see. I mean, I may hate it there. I may, I may come running back. I don't... I don't want to pull up stakes until we're absolutely sure, okay? Okay. Okay. You take as long as you need. You are terrific, you know that? I got a terrific guy. <laughs> are you sure about this, baby? Yes. I am double, triple sure. This is a big shot for you. No way it's gonna happen if you don't try. Hey, you know, one of these days, we are gonna be in a big mansion <laughs> on Beacon Street. <laughs> I am gonna be a huge entrepreneur. The world's gonna be our oyster. Gotta pay our dues first. Hey, we're good at paying dues. We'll do that. And then we're gonna make it really big. I never doubted that for a minute. Baby, you're the greatest. <laughs> Bitsy, what a pleasant surprise! <laughs> Forgive my not seeing you right away. It's all right. You're looking well, Langley. <laughs> oh, I'm tipped up, thanks. Bitsy, what a lovely light that daughter of yours has brought into this house. Oh, what a pity she's not here to see you. I suppose Phoebe has told you how enormously popular she is. If she's not here studying or entertaining us, she's out there with her crowd having a marvelous time. It's too cute. Oh, what a happy, carefree age that is. Yes, yes, it is. I'm so glad that she's fit in so well with your household. Oh, she's a most happy addition. My darling, I'm so sorry I wasn't here uh, for uh, Bitsy's arrival, but I have become so enamored of the latest acquisitions at the museum that I clean forgot all about it. Oh, that's quite all right, dear. You, <laughs> your, your timing was perfect. Oh, well, you'll have a glass of sherry with us, won't you, dear? Oh, of course I shall. Oh, oh I'll get it, dear. I'll get it. Bitsy, are you planning to, um, to be with us? Uh, if it's no trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Here's to your most welcome presence. Oh, yes, here, here. <laughs> most welcome. Thank you. Well, now we must get you properly ensconced. Sarah, would you come in for a moment, please? Why? Yes, sir. Sarah, would you be kind enough to show Mrs. Davidson to the guest room? Oh, of course, I'd be delighted. This way. Thank you. I will freshen up a bit and I'll be down later. <sighs> when the spirit moves you. Oh, Langley, <laughs> you do have a way about you. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, we jumped that hurdle nicely. Well, of all the people who least deserve your kindness, it's myself after the hard way i treated you so tell me why why are you being so good to me now <laughs> okay i won i didn't know it was a race yes you did okay okay you won you won at least you agreed to come here well it better be important and you dragged me away from carol like she wasn't even there i got something for you here you gotta find it first. Nico. Come on, come on. Start looking. Cold. <laughs> Real cold. No, no, no. Yeah, you're freezing. You're freezing. You're freezing. <laughs> Nico, this is silly. Okay, you forget it then. You don't wanna play? We don't play. No. Warm. Warmer. Real warm. Hot. Real hot. I'm on fire now. 
Whoa. I'm burning up. What did you do? I can't. It's, it's it's too expensive. It's I mean you can't spend money like that on me. You have to save it for yourself. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, I saw this, and I said, you know, I really like this, you know, but it doesn't really look too good on me. So I want you to have. <laughs> okay. I, but... I mean we're, we're friends, right? And uh, we've been through a lot of rough times. You stuck by me. I just want to say thanks. I, I can't do this. You want me to do it for you? Please. When Benjamin told me of your dilemma, I succumbed to his plea to help get you out of these desperate straits. Then you do care. Well, of course I care. I know how much empiricism mean to you. Well, as it happens, I was just at the point of telling her the horrid truth when you, you arrived to save me from that dreadful fate. Well, timing is still everything. And then you will be moving your things back in at an appropriate moment, of course. I'm not moving back, Phoebe. I'm merely here to help out a friend. Oh, Langley, I have learned my lesson. I... Well, perhaps in time I'll consider it. But for the moment, I prefer to let things I'm go the way they are. in. Mrs. Valentine was so kind as to hang up my things for me. Oh, it is so lovely to be here with both of you. This is exactly what I have needed. Warm company with good friends. Uh, yes, dear. Well, it's, it's, it's lovely for, uh, having you here, my angel. But what a pity Cameron's not here with you. Will we ever meet him? Well, you know, he is so busy with so many business dealings. I, I do hate to travel without him. It isn't nearly as much fun. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. It's as if uh, a part of you were missing. But then, of course, that makes the reunions that much more endearing. Yes, it does. I'm already looking forward to that. Oh. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for giving me my baby. So perfect. And so beautiful. Please, please help me to be a good mother to this baby. And fill her life with love.
it's all set. What's all set? Our wedding. Okay. I booked a minister and a chapel. And by this time next Friday, our little daughter will have a mother and a father who are legally bound to each other. I don't believe you. Oh, you better believe me. It's the truth. And then we're going to live happily ever after. You and me and our little baby daughter. You want a real morale booster? This is Joan London. And Spencer Christian. Tomorrow on Good Morning America, former First Ladies Rosalind Carter and Lady Bird Johnson. Plus a visit with Justine Bateman, Steve Gooden.